Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, let's answer some more mailbag questions as you guys submitted over the past couple of days here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. Got some good ones here. Um, Logan says, record prediction for the NFC East. Uh, I did this a couple of, what is it, a couple of months ago. It's going to be similar to what it was last year. So last year, obviously, the Eagles 9-7 beat Dallas in Week 16. The Cowboys, very typical, 8-8. Eight and eight. And the Giants and Redskins were both pretty bad, 4-12 <laughs> and 3-13. Three and 13. It'll be similar, but yet a little bit different. So Philadelphia is better than they were last year. Uh, the, the, the schedule is tricky, but not impossible. I said before, 10-6 and six makes a lot of sense for the Eagles. Dallas is going to be good, but they're still going to have typical Dallas issues where they have all this talent, but Dak Prescott can't seem to get them the football, and they're going to lose games that they shouldn't, like the Jets last year. They're going to win games that they shouldn't, you know, because Dallas always seems to kind of pick up one or two decent wins. But in the end, when they play Philadelphia and other big-name uh, opponents late in the season, they're going to lose. So Dallas will be 8-8. Eight and eight. The Giants are a lot better than they were last year, in my opinion. I think Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley is a good combination. They upgraded the defense a little bit. They're 7-9. and nine. And Washington has a good front four and a very good head coach in Riverboat Ron. But so they're not going to be 3-13, and 13, but 6-10 and 10 makes a lot of sense for Washington. So that's my prediction right now. I think the Redskins and Giants are going to be trickier. You know, I think Philadelphia's going to go 6-0 in the division. They basically never do. Those are just tricky ones to go ahead and navigate. But Philadelphia's the best team. I mean, top to bottom, they are the best football team here. They have the most talented quarterback. And to me, they have enough weapons to compete with Dallas, mainly because they have a better quarterback than Dallas, which we all understand and know. Um, score prediction for week one. Um, week one's going to be a little nasty in terms of every NFL team. I, I, I predict very few blowouts, a lot of close games, a lot of false starts, a lot of penalties, a lot of picks, a lot of sacks. It's, 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 it's going to be ugly, right? It's like preseason week one. You know, you watch the first preseason game every year, and the starters on their very first drive, and then we play like one drive, they're awful. They're terrible. They're never good because they're trying to get some rhythm. So it, it'll, it'll, it'll be rough. I think Philadelphia wins it by 10, though, 27-17. They are a more cohesive unit, a unit that has played together longer. I know they have new faces, but a lot of the same guys into the same places, whereas Washington, new coaching change. They've got a lot of different new talent on there. They're still good, and I think that defensive line in Washington is going to wreak havoc on the Eagles' front four. But Philadelphia wins this just like they did last year when both matchups, they win this one 27-17 is going to be my score prediction. Give me your score prediction down below for week one. I'm curious if anyone gets it right. I'll be looking for it, though. Drop your score prediction down below in the comments section. Um, see old Timmy Boy, Timmy Boy, as they say, longest yeah boy ever. You recognize that if you are, uh, you know, a real a real fan. But anyway, do you think our O-line will struggle this year with Brandon Brooks now? Andre Dillard injuries? Yeah, they will. I mean, let's be honest. The, the, the starting O-line is most likely going to be Jack Driscoll at left tackle, Isaac Sayamalo at left guard, Jason Kelsey at center, Jason Peters at right guard, and Lane Johnson at right tackle. Now, at some point, will they uh, cough up the money to Jason Peters to help save the left side of the offensive line and move Pryor over there to the right guard? Potentially. And it could be Pryor at left tackle. It could be Jack Driscoll at left tackle. It could obviously go ahead and maybe even be uh, a Jordan Maliata at left tackle. It could be any one of those three guys who have been practicing and playing that position so far in training camp. But yeah, I mean, they're going to struggle, especially early on. I think Chase Young is going to have a big week. He's going to have a massive week next week, in my opinion. Wentz is going to have to be uh, running for his life, and he's going to have to be, you know, making the classic Wentz out-of-the-pocket moves that he did, especially during the 2017 season. I think they will get better as the season goes on. And again, you still have Kelsey, you still have Peters, you still have Lane Johnson, and Isaac Samuel is a very underrated left guard, so I think they'll be okay, but they will struggle early on because Johnson's been out, Peters has been out, and they're trying to figure out some continuity. It'll take a couple weeks to figure it out in Philadelphia. I trust them, but maybe not early. Let me know what you guys think, though. You guys trust them? Type 1 down below for yes. Type 0 down below for no if you do not trust them down below in the comment section. I also trust the uh, importance of wearing a mask, obviously, right now. Social distancing, mask wearing has been important for the past couple of months, and we have the Eagles mask to go ahead and get you guys safe and looking good as well at chatsports.com slash Eagles mask. They have some new ones as well. This solo one, uh, they have the one that goes all the way down to the bottom of your neck. It looks fantastic, and you'll see a lot of the Eagles players and coaches wearing these on the sideline for actual games, so go ahead and pick one, one, up, one up right now. Link is down below in the description box, chatsports.com slash Eagles mask. Um... See here, Ian says, who's likely to have a greater impact this season, and then which will have the best career? Um, which linebacker? Davion Taylor, Sean Bradley, Casey Tuhill, O-line, Jack Driscoll, Prince Tegan, and Nogo. Okay, let's just break this down. Okay, so I, this season, I would say probably Davion Taylor, if you had to pick, because he's a third-round draft pick. We haven't heard a lot about Davion Taylor in training camp. I'll be honest, there have been a, not a lot of people singing the praises of Davion Taylor. They've sung the praises more of Sean Bradley, 
And I've said before that I would like Sean Bradley to get some reps in there, and I think he will at some point in the season. But if you have to say who has a bigger impact this early on in their career, it'll probably be Davion Taylor. But I honestly think Sean Bradley is going to be a good linebacker in Philadelphia. Now, I've said that before of other linebackers, and they, you know, get on the practice squad, or they are special teams guys, and they never really do anything. But I'm excited to see what Sean Bradley does. He was a Temple guy. He's played in Lincoln Financial Field more than any other Eagles rookie, at least the past couple of seasons. He was a late-round draft pick because, of course, he plays at Temple. He's a little bit undersized, but I think he's done very well in terms of, obviously, just being a guy that can be uh, counted on if you need to throw him in there in a situation where the linebacker backing core struggles early on this year. Tuhill is an absolute project. We'll see, obviously, what happens with him this year. In terms of offensive line, Driscoll's ready to go now. He's a lot more ready to go now than Prince Tega Winogo. But Winogo had a... I mean, he was pretty good at Auburn. And I think they're excited about what they got out of Winogo, obviously. Uh, way... He's, just not, he's not, not a high prospect, but I think they're excited about the potential that he has. But he kind of falls in behind Jordan Maliata, who they've had a lot of potential for the past couple of years. So he's been got, a guy who's gotten more reps than Winogo. So I would say Driscoll, just because... Uh, he's he's more ready right now. Like, if you needed to go ahead and throw them in there at right guard, I think he would be able to hold up. I mean, maybe not against the better D tackles in the league, but I think he would be able to hold up overall. So I'll say I'll say Bradley long-term and Driscoll long-term, but Davion Taylor is ready, more ready right now, and Jack Driscoll is more ready than right now. Does that answer your question? It's tough, though, right? Like, do we really know who's going to be good and who's not? No, the answer is no. It, it's just, it's like a, it's tough. Like, close your eyes and just throw the, the uh, dart at the board and hope you hit one. That's how, what you do on day three of the NFL draft and with undrafted free agents. Make sure you're subscribed, though, because if we make any more moves or if there's uh, injuries or obviously just previewing the episode, coming games obviously this weekend we got it all covered here in on philadelphia eagles now go ahead and subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button down below uh, let's do one more here david says who do you think will have a better career quest watkins or john hightower i mean right now gun to my head make me bet all of my money i'd say john hightower and there's a reason why they drafted him ahead of quest watkins although as i said before both of these guys would have gone higher in the nfl draft if there weren't like 14 to 15 other good wide receivers ahead of him it was just a historically great wide receiver draft and that it, it is what it is Hightower's had a better overall offseason, but not by much because Watkins has been pretty good. I had Watkins as a, a fringe practice squad guy, and yet he's a guy who's obviously going to be an impact player in Philadelphia this year. I think Hightower makes more impact and a higher impact early on, but both of these guys hopefully... That's why Philadelphia drafted two of them later on in the NFL draft. Hopefully, are going to go ahead and turn out to be good. Both had good careers uh, in college, and I think both have, have, have shown more than I was expecting from a rookie wide receiver, especially a late-round rookie wide receiver in the Eagles training camp so far. There you go. The ultimate out for today here on Philadelphia Eagles. Now, obviously... Trying to answer as many mailbag questions as we possibly can. The next videos we do in terms of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are going to be leading up and getting us ready for the latest Eagles injury news, as well as all the stuff to get you ready for week one. We're almost here. Right, like it, it could be a week. If you're watching this on Sunday, it could be a week until kickoff for week one. I'm so excited, and hopefully you guys are too. We have all the coverage here, though, on Philadelphia Eagles now. So subscribe, like button, and stay tuned for all of that coverage. I'm your fearless host, as always, for Philadelphia Eagles now, Thomas Mott. My job is to give you guys the Eagle news and the Eagle rumors and just cut through all the BS, as I always try to do. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. Again, all time we have for our day on Philadelphia Eagles now, Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.